describe the regulatory landscape and the impact of RDR. So in the South African environment, we have essentially two categories of financial service providers that are providing uh, investment management or wealth management services called Category 1 and Category 2. A new piece of legislation which was introduced some years ago and which is slowly uh, uh, rolled out into that environment is uh, RDR or Retail Distribution Review, something that's happened globally, particularly in the UK. And I'm, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the UK experience because it is a, it's probably a forerunner to what we're going to experience in South Africa. But essentially what the regulator is saying with the RDR is you need to separate the duties and the functions within the landscape that the, the, the client is experiencing. You need to break that into three broad categories. One is administration. That's who provides the product, wrapper, or service uh, uh, experience at an administration level. The second is the advice element. In other words, dividing the administration away or separating the, the, the whole thing into administration, advice, and then investment management. The advice element is category one, all right, advisors. And ultimately, it's going to become law that a category one financial advisor may not do category two services, which is investment management. Even though they might be capable, if they don't hold that license, they won't be allowed to do it. So the UK experience has been much quicker uh, enactment of their RDR regulation and a very quick uptake. So essentially, with the, the, the local regulator in the UK said, from this date forward, that's, why, that's the way it's going to be. And essentially, they enforced it from day one. And what that meant was that financial advisors quickly turned to DFMs or discretionary fund managers, category two investment managers in South Africa's uh, 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 terminology, for portfolio construction. And Yes, they did bring some insights, but essentially the separation of duties is essential. I would guess that that is, it's been on the cars in South Africa now for probably about five years, four, four years, and it'll probably get enacted in the next year to 18 months and enforced at that point in time. Strongly encouraged at the moment, but not enforced at the moment. So in the South African environment, why you'd want to have a DFM relationship is to be well prepared for then when that time comes. So you're not caught with what do I do next? And then you're forced into a corner. So I think as a financial advisor, category one, you should be engaging a DFM to help you build those portfolios, which the regulator says you're going to need very soon.